All right, welcome to Fire Dojo. So uh, this week's vlog uh, is uh, by the request of uh, one of my uh, martial arts friends out on the West Coast in California, Barry. Barry has requested that I do a pretty good uh, demo explaining hand drill floating. Um, so what I have here are four sets uh, that are orders and um, so I have two here that are Western Red Cedar boards and these two are Redwood boards so uh, actually so both of these are from the West Coast right so Redwoods from California Western Red Cedar on the West Coast and uh, by request these spindles are all horseweed. So there's four horseweed spindles. They're all three eighths of an inch in diameter at the base. And uh, as you can see with these sets, none of them are burned in. Uh, so all four of these are gonna be a test. <clears throat> while I demonstrate the floating okay so uh, I think I'm gonna take just a few minute breaks between each one because uh, one of the most important um, variables of doing friction fire is energy and uh, so in a way it's the same thing as your phone right so you use your phone your batteries drained you got to plug it in for a little while and let the battery go back up again, right? So, uh, plus, there's no hurry or rush in doing friction fire. It still has to remain uh, fun. So, uh, no pressure. So, right now we're not in a survival situation. The reason why we're in my kitchen is because it's dark outside and we can't see anything outside and this is the only time I could film. My son Jake again has graciously uh, volunteered to, <laughs> to uh, hold the camera while we do this. So I'm going to take three of these boards, put them aside for a mo moment. So we're going to focus on this one. So again, it is Western Red Cedar. Okay. And I'm gonna pick, let me see, yep. So again, horseweed. Uh, this is untested, unused. This is a first time test. We're gonna pick this one all the way to the, to the right. Now floating, <clears throat> one of the most important things in consideration of doing floating as choosing floating as a technique and a method in the first place is having the correct material. You can't just pick any material that looks like a hand drill spindle and spin it and expect it to get a call no matter how good your technique is. Not every material is going to work. Now, uh, horseweed. This horseweed is uh, seasoned. It's almost, almost perfectly straight. It's straight enough for hand drill, okay? It's not rotten. It's just the right density and hardness for floating, and that's very key. Because if you pick materials that are too hard, no matter how much you float for how long, you're probably not going to get a coal and you're going to injure yourself. Whereas in a survival situation, you should have chosen a different method and a different technique to begin with. So don't let ego ever get in the way of doing what's correct in doing firekeeping, okay? 
Now, I have the correct materials here. I have a relatively soft medium hardwood for the board, Western Red Cedar. <clears throat> and I have a perfect candidate of a spindle, which is horseweed, uh, in order for to allow me to choose to do the method and technique of floating. All right, so here we go. Now the floating itself. Floating is, uh, first of all, the traditional way of doing hand drill is you lean on the spindle, getting as much rotation as you possibly can, but your hands work their way down to the bottom, and of course the top starts helicoptering, which is what I call it, okay? Now when you get to the bottom, you can't spin anymore because there's nowhere to go. You have to grab it with one hand, shoot the other hand back at the top, bring the other hand up, and start all over again. Now this pause, for the time it takes to bring your hands up, allows the temperature down here to cool down. Now it's not vital, <clears throat> and with practice, you could do this fairly quickly without there even being a real change in temperature. This is really the argument for stopping and the temperature cooling is, is somewhat valid, but um, there's other reasons for choosing floating over the traditional method. One is uh, your energy expenditure. So uh, you're more relaxed. You're not really trying to push your way down the stalk. You have your body more um, in a place of alignment, okay? Now, the hand technique for floating is that you go from the fingertip to the base of your palm on your opposite hand, and you go all the way to the base of the palm and fingertip of your other hand as, as best you can. And you repeat. Now it looks exaggerated. It looks like this. One hand shoots down for pressure. The other hand shoots up to reload. Now the hand that went down and went up is going to shoot down to reload and this hand is going to shoot downward for pressure and switch. And uh, this has been called Itsy Bitsy Spider by some people because it looks exaggerated like this. This is an exaggeration. When I start doing it, it's more subtle and it doesn't look like this anymore. <clears throat> it almost looks like my hands are straight when I'm actually doing it. But I can assure you that the angle position on my hands while I'm doing it is sort of at this angle. Okay, and I'm going base of the palm, fingertip, as best as possible. This is a maximum amount of rotation. <clears throat> the maximum amount of rotation here, so let's see. If we start at horseweed here, right, I can go one, two, three, four full rotations, four full horseweed rotations. Do you see that? So I'm estimating that if I go back, that's four, ro four rotations, <clears throat> which is why you don't want to do this because that's barely one rotation. No matter how much pressure you put on here, uh, a lot of rotations is actually very important. Now the fact that this is 3 8 of an inch in diameter means that a thinner stalk will have more rotations than a stalk that has a larger diameter. It will have less rotations 
because my hand surface area will run out before it makes more rotations. Okay. So the thing about floating too is that your hands don't really go anywhere. They just stay at the top. Now I could feel the round top of the spindle in my hand. I don't even have to look. Not even looking at the spindle. I can actually look down here and not look at what I'm doing. Okay. And I could feel my hands sitting at the top. <clears throat> okay. Now the other key thing on floating is speed. Once I get this rhythm down, first of all, it's good to practice this slow. Just to get it into muscle memory and not think about it. Okay, and then what you do is you start increasing the speed. And of course, as you get really fast, it doesn't even look like my hands go up and down. Okay, so I'm not putting any pressure on that yet. So, now, as you saw, I put a little bit of lotion on my hands, just one drop on your hand of any good lotion. Okay, and then you rub it in. Now, it'll feel greasy at first, right? I've said this a million times. It'll feel greasy at first, but as you keep rubbing, it ends up being friction instead of feeling greasy and slippery, okay? Because if your hands are dry and the stalk is dry, there's no friction here. Your hands are just gonna slide. You need to have some kind of a type of moisture for friction, which is why you see um, fire keepers spit in their hands to do a hand drill so they can have a grip, okay? So, for this demo, I think Jake is going to have me up here and get the whole thing in this shot. And you can see there's, no, first of all, we'll see there's nothing in the notch, right? There's nothing there. I like scientific proof. And there's three steps here. One is mating. So we're mating it together. Take your time and relax. All relax, no rush. All right. I can see it's starting to get friction and some heat because it's smoking at the bottom. I'm gonna increase speed. We can see the notch is starting to blacken up and fill with dust. Okay. Stay nice and relaxed. Rotations and speed. Rotations and speed. Rotations and speed. Just relax. And I'm just going to drop myself down the spindle on my final run. And there you go. And I would call that a successful test. All right. So again, these boards are designed to not lose your coal. You would have your tinder bundle ready and you would just dump into your tinder bundle, blow the coal in your tinder bundle, put in your teepee fire, and you're all set to go. All right, so I'm just going to take a few minutes, uh, get my muscles to relax a little bit, and then we're going to do the other three. All right, thanks. All right, welcome back. So we just did uh, this one here, right? 
So I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to put one more drop of lotion on my hands to maintain the health of my hands, right? Because fire keeping is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be associated with pain and suffering, okay? And hand drill will injure you and cause you pain and suffering if you're not careful, okay? And do things uh, reasonably and rationally, all right? So, uh, we just did a Western Red Cedar with the horseweed. So let's do a Redwood. Okay, we'll just pick this one, right? So, let's see. Again, horseweed. Uh, Caniza canadensis is the Latin name. It's three eighths of an inch diameter at the base, right? This has never been used. This base has never been used. We're testing it today. Okay. So, again, um, fingertip to base of palm, and one hand shoots down for pressure, the other hand shoots back up to reset. And you do this itsy bitsy spider thing. This is exaggerated. This is not what it really looks like. But this is the motion. So you do this slowly. And then what you do is you. Once you have the motion, you commit it to muscle memory. Notice I'm not doing any pressure right now. Okay. And we're just increasing speed. What you really have to uh, get a feel for is just feeling the top of the spindle between the near the top of your hand here as it rolls. And that's how you maintain your your place at the top of the spindle. Again, you're, you're going to be very relaxed. There's no stress. Okay. This is all mostly rotation. So again, we're getting about four full turns on a spindle, at least with my hand surface area and this 3 8 inch diameter spindle. We're going to get about four turns on each spin. Okay. And our three steps are, we're going to mate it, it's going to warm up and fill the notch with dust, and then it's going to ignite. So here we go. Nice and relaxed, just breathe. Now I'm just going to, all I'm doing is just leaning on it a little bit. Just a lean. Don't use your arms. You hear the squeaking? We're starting to get pressure, and now we have now we have uh, friction. Just stay relaxed. Just keep going. Keep breathing. Stay relaxed. Just lean on it. The notch fill. You can see that it's filling. I have to reset my hands there. Okay. All right. And then I'm just going to relax and take a run, just fall down the stalk, just like that. And there's our coal.
All right, and again, can't go anywhere. Put it in your tinder bundle. Blow your tinder bundle into flame. I'm gonna put this coal in the, <laughs> in the sink. And then you put your set away so it doesn't get damaged. All right, so that set also works. And uh, just gonna take a few minutes for another break, get my batteries recharged in a sense for a second. And then we'll do the, uh, the other cedar and then the other redwood. Okay. All right, here we go again. So again, you should have a uh, habit, a routine for when you do hand drill, where the first thing you're going to do and the last thing you're going to do is make sure that you always take care of your hands when you're doing hand drill. Okay. So again, uh, to keep your hands from being dry and so that your hands have friction and for the general health of your hands, one drop of any good hand lotion. All right, so we did these two and we're gonna do one more Western Red Cedar, okay? And here we have another horseweed, 3 8 inch. All right, this one has never been used. It's brand new. Spindles are about uh, 22 and 3 quarter inches to fit in the trough here. Um, this hearth board has never been used, as you can see. It's brand new. And we're going to, again, just pick the far right one just for laughs. Again, we go fingertip to bottom of the palm. Okay, this is the exaggerated motion. One goes down, the other one comes back up to reset. Okay, and then you get your muscle memory. You go a little faster, a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Okay. Then when you get, when you think you can do this with a good amount of speed, just lean on it. So get your, do your four rotations at least, right? You're getting as many rotations as you can with speed. And then you just lean, lean on it, just like that. So again, there's the three steps. It has to make together, which it's doing now. It's starting to warm up. The notch is going to start getting some dust in there. Okay. Keep breathing, nice and relaxed. Right. And then just let yourself fall down that last rung. Okay. And there's our call. Sweet on Western Red Cedar again. All right, take a couple minutes, recharge my battery. Still fun. I am not injured. So that health variable is very important for hand drill. Do not injure your hands. 
Do not allow your hands to become injured because you cannot, you cannot associate pain and suffering with firekeeping. It has to always be fun, right? A couple minutes and we'll do this last redwood. Okay. All right. So here's the last one. Our last, <clears throat> our last redwood. Uh, Sequoia Semperverance. All right. Put some lotion on the hand. This should be a habit. Hand care should always be a habit. Now, before I've even done anything, uh, you should. It's it's vitally important, okay, that. Uh, you begin to get experience in knowing what uh, hand drill material looks like and feels like because I won't even consider doing hand drill unless I'm fairly confident that the materials are floating capable so if I think a hand drill is harder than the ability to do floating on, okay, if it's harder, where I think I have to press down and just keep going down like this and just press hard and go down like this, I won't do hand drill. I refuse, in fact, I refuse to do hand drill if it requires more pressure than floating, okay? If a spindle is harder <clears throat> and the board is harder and I have to apply more pressure, that just means I'm gonna injure my hands, okay? They're gonna get hot spots, they're gonna blister, they're gonna uh, eventually callus up. I have none of that. There's no blisters, there's no callusing. There's no hot spots and there's no pain, okay? And this is how hand drills should pretty much always be done, in my opinion, okay? If hand drills, if, if you find yourself doing this and working your way down all the time uh, because of the materials, you need to just, in my opinion, you just need to stop. This whole thing where um, you have to train your hands and, uh, you know, they'll blister, but, you know, eventually there'll be calluses and you're, you're really looking for calluses and like, you know, this is not like Kung Fu where you're developing like an iron palm thing where you could like smash 16 boards. Okay, you're not, you're not training your hands to do something really tough. Okay. You have to do this intelligently and smartly, okay? Where, again, my fire dojo's philosophy is that if the materials are not uh, for, uh, are not uh, competent for just floating, I won't do standard hand drill, okay? I won't do that. So again, <clears throat> right? Push down, pull back and reset, right? We want full spin. So we're probably getting four full rotations from fingertip to palm, right? Get it into your muscle memory so you don't have to think and you don't have to look. You could do this entirely by feel, okay? Now, once you have your rhythm, just lean on it. All you have to do is lean. Friction. 
remember to keep breathing. My hands are starting to slide. Okay. Keep breathing, keep breathing. And I'm just gonna do the run down. I don't have enough dust. You know what? I'm out of energy. So I did three. One, two, three. I'm pretty tired now, but my hands are not injured. And you just have to know when that's enough for now. <laughs> Alright, so I hope I'm still going to test this later, but I hope that was a good thorough demo of floating because and floating is important to know because if you don't get it the first time in a survival situation you're gonna have to try again so you're gonna try a second time and if you don't get it you're gonna have to try a third time and if you don't get it, you're gonna have to try a fourth time. But know that with, with each try, your battery just can't recharge uh, fully. Unless you give yourself a really, really good amount of time. Maybe even the next day, in some cases. Okay, so, but, with each try is not only a drain on energy, but the potential for injury. So, here, let's say I got a hot spot. Now, I have a blister. Now, I rip the blister open, and now I have an open wound. And now... I am just masochistically torturing myself, okay? So with each try, okay, but I don't have hot spots, I have no blisters, and I have no pain. And that is how, and that is the reason behind making sure your materials are perfect for floating and not using materials that are too hard for a hand drill. If it's too hard, you're going to do something different. Okay, so you're either going to use uh, a thumb brace, which I have a video for. It's in the vlog list. I forget which number it is. So there's a thumb brace, or you can finagle it where you're doing a, um, a mouth drill. So where you have a, a mouth brace and you uh, apply pressure this way while you use your hands. So you have to think what technology is going to be able to make a fire and you have to leave your ego out of it. You just have to know when it's just there's a time to stop and you just have to do it. So I did three and now I really really need a rest because I'm not going to do four. All right so I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks.